because when I do go into that place, if I do go into that dark place, it's so strong and so powerful that even when I leave the gym, I'll have a cloud over me for days and it will, it will pull me down mentally into a place that puts me in a, in quite a negative mood. So I try to avoid it unless it's really, really required. When I was younger, I could be there often, but now I'm an older man with more to lose. You know, I, 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 I find that fascinating. And it's so my take on that is that to have the ability to go to that place is a gift to have the ability to manage it is a skill. How how do you per, how do you see your mental state when you are training? Do you think you train angry, or do you just think that uh, that might appear so from the outside, or do you think that that's not accurate? How how do, how do you think you uh, are? You know what I mean? I think it's a, I think it's seasonal in the sense of it depends where I'm at and what I want to achieve. Um, like if I want to, if I genuinely want to be the nastiest mother. Like if I want to be the person who can lift the most with the best form, I will make it happen. Like I just, I, I just know I will. Like I will do everything every day until I am the person, mm-hmm. and that's just it. Like, like and Jordan knows that. Like, like competing this year five times or whatever I did. Like that's that ain't because I'm one who. That's because logically I'm thinking, let's get my face out there. Like this ain't nothing. You haven't seen James. This is just my physique off the back of turning pro. That's nothing. Like honestly, give me a year. If I have an off season, you're gonna be afraid. Like that's how I think. Like I know it. Like I know what I'm capable of. Um, but I also know that you have to do things sometimes in the business of bodybuilding or in the business of life. Um, but I'm not. I'm not arrogant and I'm not at all. But I'm confident that I have something wired in me different than most. Probably different. Like I, I, I tell myself that I am. I tell myself I'm different than most because if I don't believe I'm different, then why the fuck am I gonna be different? Right. And Jordan seen me. Like if I go under, if I get in the squat rack and if I really want it, if I really, really want it, I will flow that shit to a high level. I don't give a shit, but I can only muster that when I want to and when I see it fit. And I know, and I've learned from perhaps more seasoned people that if I continue down that route of being like that and train like that, then I will blow something. Um, it's still there. I still have it. And I know that it will come back out. But I think um, it's taken a little bit of a back step because I've decided to step back and educate myself a little bit on other areas of me. Mm-hmm. But, then, but it is still there, and I promise you, you know, it will be back out. There will be times where I draw that in a – I don't know. It is like a rage. It is like a rage. I, I do get angry. I, I'm pissed off with the world. There's a lot of things I dislike with the world. I think there's a lot of shit people in it. And if I'm trying to do a set that's going to be unimaginably crazy and strong, then I will think about all the things in the world that need to change because – like, if I'm honest with you, it upsets me that the world, in my eyes, is a dying place. It's a place that's polluted to shit. It's a place that... There's a lot of negative, put it that way, and I could really rein in on that and picture the darkest future for mankind and draw something out in the gym that will just create a, an energy that you just can't comprehend. But I choose to try and stay away from that because when I do go into that place, if I do go into that dark place, it's so strong and so powerful that even when I leave the gym... I'll have a cloud over me for days and it will, it will pull me down mentally into a place that puts me in a, in quite a negative mood. So I try to avoid it unless it's really, really required. When I was younger, I could be there often, but now I'm an older man with more to lose. You know, I, 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 I find that fascinating. And it's, so my take on that is that to have the ability to go to that place is a gift to have the ability to manage it is a skill for sure and you need to be skilled to be a champion right so i think that maturity and management of that is part of what makes you is part of what's going to make you get better i think i think so because i i know if i continued to be that way it wouldn't make me better and that's the truth um, or short term better. You, you might be better at yeah. a short blast, but then you might be done. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Because the thing is, at the end of the day, bodybuilding is far bigger than what you perform in the gym. For sure. The, the gym is a small part of the larger picture. And you need to be able to live with yourself and live with your thoughts. And if every time you enter the gym, you're using chaotic thoughts to create an energy to get a good workout. 
that's a lot of time in the gym and that's a lot of time in a, a chaotic place. And if that, yeah. if that's exercised too often, believe me, it does take a toll on you as a person because we, you're going places, you're going places mentally that, that, that aren't nice. We were talking about the same thing we said earlier uh, with, with Chris and lowering the dosages. When the body oh, is toxic, when the mind is toxic, exactly. you're in a you're in a different place. The body, the rest of the body can't function as well. But just like the supplements, time and a place yeah. when you need to call on that, it's there. Yes, yes. You use, use it, it when you need to, and you know when you don't. So it's the same thing. You know, you might ramp up some gear at the end of a prep because it's time to close the door. Uh, but that's a couple weeks. You're not talking about 52 weeks of the year. Yeah. Same thing with the training. It's a, it's a time and place. I think that as I've gotten older, I've really become understanding of energy. And yes. when, you, when you have that energy, it's nice to be able to flip the switch, but to know how far to push it. So, like, you know, I, I had somebody tell me uh, literally yesterday, uh, she was like, oh, I, I didn't even uh, think that you saw me there. I'm like, oh, I see everything in the gym. Oh, you, you seem so focused. No, not really. Really? Once I touch the bar. Yeah. Oh, right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Once the bar is in my hand, it's time. And then everything goes away. But prior to that, you know, I don't, you know, I think and that's back to that experience of being able to call on what's time. Like, I used to need to amp up to drive to the gym. And now it's like, I got to do this set. Five seconds. Okay. I'm yeah, ready. that's what I, I respect that because it's, the truth is it's like bullets. Okay. Like a, a, a skilled sniper just needs the one bullet. You put it through the victim. Boom. Target yep. done. You don't just let off. You let off. There's going to be victims that are, the the there's going to be casualties that are innocent. Yep. You know, it's the same thing, man. You got to like, you got to keep your your. You know, your bullet is essentially your ability to tap into that side of you, and you need to keep that accurate, and you need to like, let it spill outside of its projected kind of route. Because if it does, there could be consequences. Right. Yeah. One of my favorite quotes from. Uh... Remember that the first generation iron was when Branch Warren says, uh, you know, I want to take that home to my family. No, it's, it's true. It's, it's true. It's a maturity thing. Every woman when they're young, they want to go, they want to be like, Rrr. and you see it, they, they, all the people I knew when I was younger, they all used to work on security on the doors. They used to all do bodybuilding and they would take their aggression from the gym to the doors with them and end up hurting people when they're working on the doors in security unnecessarily it was spilling out into the world. Like it was toxic. Do you know what I mean? For sure. Um, yeah. So that's why like, I'm glad that you touched on that. Cause I think that's a really interesting topic. It's not even one I've discussed. You've there... managed to bring it forward. And I think that's really interesting that you have to realize that your energy that is inside your head is just as real as, as the microphone in front of me. It does exist. Don't well, that think was it not doesn't. plugged in though. <laughs> the ones that's not plugged in. But, but don't get con- oh, well, it's plugged into my laptop. <laughs> but yeah, don't get con- don't get confused that these things just because they don't have a physical body don't have an effect. Yeah, sure. I, another another th- I, I can't remember who I just heard talking about this, so I don't mean to not give them credit, but um, they were saying that you know we're all so obsessed with our diets, but we forget that what we put into our head and allow ourselves to think is part of our diet. That's part of our consumption, our weekly consumption. It's not just about what goes in our mouth. It's what goes in our head. And we have to start thinking about our thoughts as part of our diets. And if you're not going to put a bag of McDonald's in while you're prepping, there's also a bag of McDonald's equivalent here that you need to make sure you're not allowing into your diet. So uh, that was just really an interesting. Uh, I remember when I heard it, I was like, "Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna definitely steal that and pawn it off as my own quote at some point in the near future." <laughs> so, <laughs> well, I, I love that. I love that because that's why, like, when I drive to the gym myself, I listen to classic FM. I listen to classical music because all the things you're hearing, all the things you're seeing, they are being consumed just as much as the food you eat. Mm-hmm. And you have so, a choice. You have a choice of what you consume. So we got you listen to Mozart and Jordan listened into The Lion King. He listens to some really weird shit, though. <laughs> and, 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 two, and two of the nastiest motherfuckers on the planet. Two of the nastiest. I can imagine, see the video imagine, now. But the problem you know? is, it is a bit nasty. Like You can imagine Jordan like walking towards you with Lion King music. Like That is scarier, actually, than listening to Slipknot. 
Listen, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, he actually is. To watch him deadlifting in slow motion and hear Elton John sing The Circle of Life <laughs> would maybe be the best video I could possibly oh. imagine. <laughs> I, I gotta be honest though, I don't want to fuck with a guy who's jamming a Lion King oh, and exactly. lifting 900 pounds because exactly. he ain't all there. That's <laughs> some fucked up shit. <laughs> He's actually vocally saying, I have to calm myself down. That's how uh, crazy I am. <laughs> that is nuts. That's, you've got to like, golf yourself with kids' movie songs because if you don't, you're going to explode and make the world just end. <laughs> Oh, it's just fun. all over. It all it's all over because Jordan went too far on the squat rack. <laughs> yeah. Oh, 